English being the most learned second language in the world is now on high demand for new committed language learners. Most of them go to language school to learn grammar in hope of being able to become fluent in the language. But to no avail, studying the complex grammar structure won't help you in getting fluent. As everybody else, I started learning English as early as I was in, in high school, I guess. You know, I spent six years in, in high school, which is the long enough to gain fluency in any language. But that didn't happen to me, and I was still struggling to speak out, and my pronunciation was so out of question that it sounded terrible. You know, like thinking of how six years went to waste, I realized that there must be a mistake somewhere, and I found out that I spent all of those years learning English, but, you know, not learning how to communicate in English. And after all, that was what it's supposed to be. And realizing the fact that the language cannot be told, it can only be acquired. I looked up the online, some of the many ways to achieve English fluency. And from what I read, I understand that there were four stages of learning English. The listening method becomes the most vital one, followed by speaking and reading and then writing. And starting from that day on, I started to listen to a lot of English listening materials, such as movies, you know, podcasts, storybooks, and so others. And I believe that language learning should be fun and enjoyable. That's why I only listened to stuff that I enjoyed so that I wouldn't feel pressured. And the process of acquiring the language would be so much easier. I would listen to them for many hours a day. And you know what? I didn't feel like I was in the process of learning. I only felt like I was treating myself with good movies to watch and, of course, you know, maybe podcasts to listen to. So for some people, it will be hard at first to understand the native speakers. In that case, you can consider downloading the subtitles for the movie in English and then try to understand all of the words. Then you can remove the subtitles and see the improvement that you just made. It doesn't, it doesn't work the same for all people. That's why I just highly recommend that repeating them over and over again. For me, listening alone, of course, is not enough. So when I'm listening to something, uh, the pause button is, is very important to me. I will pause at certain part of the podcast, for example, to imitate the intonation, the pronunciation of the certain words to make myself sound more like a native. And it may take it quite a while, but I think it's a worthwhile process because it brought a huge impact on my spoken ability. Yeah, of course, you know, I may not sound total like a native, but I've been, I've been told it quite a few times that my intonation and pronunciation uh, was getting better and, and people even ask me how I did it. I also believe in the, you know, like effortless speaking ability. I always uh, try to speak out whenever possible, ignoring the fact that I would make a lot of grammar, grammar errors. But did I care? Not in the slides. Even the native speakers don't use the perfect grammar. You know, just speak out and try to sound as effortless as possible. And of course, guys, the reading is also a fundamental skill in forming a firm base um, um, vocabulary. I often found more, how to say, the bombastic, like complex words when reading than by listening. I may not use the words in my daily conversation, but having an extensive vocabulary totally helps me in understanding the <coughs> materials that I read and listen to. And after all, uh, communication is not only about making people understand us, but understanding the pupil first. The online dictionaries have certainly played a huge role in the process of learning English. But when reading something, looking up the dictionary every now and then is very exhausting. I sometimes don't even bother to look up for the words that I am not sure of, uh, but I just try to uh, guess them instead, of, uh, instead and uh, it, it, it works you know, almost all the time. 
And no matter how many hours we, we spend in a day learning English, you see guys, it will not be as productive if we neglect the importance of having conducive environment when learning English. I always make sure that I learn English in a very comfortable place, which I would not mind being there for long hours. I also try to surround myself around, you know, like the positive people, you know, uh, because those people keep me inspired in continuing to improve my English and help others to get there too. Last but not least, guys, you won't be fluent in English in a day. Learning language is a lifelong process. So just, you know, try to enjoy it yourself and enjoy the process. Thank you very much.